the Kraft Foods Company presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of Parquet Margarine. Millions of women all over America serve Parquet because it tastes so good. Why, Parquet tastes like it should cost twice as much. To market, to market, to get some Parquet. Home again, home again, try it today. You like it, you love it, like millions who say their favorite margarine is. P-A-R-K-A-Y, Parquet Margarine, made by Kraft. Well, it's Sunday in Summerfield. An aura of peace and goodwill surrounds Water Commissioner Gildersleeve as he strolls home from church in his Sunday best with a pretty lady on his arm. Oh, good morning, Jones. <laughs> Glad to see you in church. Who's he, Throckmorton? Uh, Jones is a clerk in the city treasurer's office, that line. Oh. Always like to see those fellows in the treasurer's office attending church. <laughs> well, as Mayor to Williger. Good morning, Mr. Mayor. Glad you saw me in church. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Don't you just love to go to church on Sunday, Throckmorton? Dr. Prescott's sermons make you feel so good inside. Well, Adeline, they make you feel pretty good when you get outside, too. <laughs> pretty long talker, Prescott. Oh, you. I enjoyed every minute of it. I never saw so many pretty new fall hats. <laughs> <laughs> it was awfully sweet of you to invite me to go. Well, I knew you'd want to hear Marjorie's first solo. She sang beautifully, Throckmorton. Yeah. Little Marjorie in the choir. Family's growing up, Adeline. Before we know it, the baby will be going to Sunday school. The poor little foundling. I don't think anybody's ever going to claim her. When are you going to adopt a Throckmorton? Well, the state law seems to think I should be married first. Well, it's none of my business, but I agree the baby ought to have a mother. That may be true. Some other couple could come along and adopt her unless you get married. Of course, it's none of my business. <laughs> but who could I marry, Adeline? Well, there's an old southern expression Sometimes you're so close to the forest You can't see the tree Oh, <laughs> uh, yes, well, here's your house and there's mine Goodbye <clears throat> I see the tree all right She nearly had me out on a limb <laughs> <laughs> Well, Bertie, sunning the baby? Yes, Mr. Gillsleeve. Thought I'd bring out in the yard for a while. Good idea. And how are you, little baby? You like it out here? <laughs> yeah, well, I guess she does. <laughs> you care to watch her for a while, Mr. Gillsleeve? I ought to start dinner. Uh, dinner? Oh, go right ahead, Bertie. Thank you, sir. Come along, little baby. The sun's moving around. Let's move around with it. Yeah. That's it. Hold on to your hat, baby. Here we go, right out the driveway. Oh, there's a car coming in here. Uh, Bullard, always using my driveway to turn around. Why doesn't he use his own? Oh, hello, Gildersleeve. Hope you don't mind my using your driveway. Oh, no, anytime. That's what it's for, neighbor. <laughs> nice car you're driving, Mr. Bullard. Well, it'll do until I get my 49 model. Late 48. Oh, yes. I'm waiting for a 49 model, too. <laughs> Been waiting since 1936. <laughs> well, that's a nice buggy you're pushing, Gildersleeve. Buggy? Oh, yes, there's a baby inside. Yes, yes, I know. I've been noticing her. I'm very interested in babies. You are? Hello there, little Miss Baby. Remember me? I'm Mr. Rumson Bullet from across the street. Oh, brother. Yeah, we, we shook hands the other day, remember? <laughs> tickle, 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 tickle. <laughs> 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 
He doesn't seem very responsive today. Well, maybe it's your gloves, Mr. Bullard. She might be frightened by the yellow suede. Oh. Ah, you're lucky to have a lovely child like this, Gildersleeve. Mrs. Bullard and I have often discussed adopting a little girl to grow up with Craig. That might help. <laughs> little Craig. And this baby has aroused my interest. She has? Have you started adoption proceedings yet, Gildersleeve? Well, no, Mr. Bullard. To adopt her, I'd have to get married, and that seems a little drastic. <laughs> yeah, yes, I can understand why you wouldn't want to assume additional obligations. A water commissioner's salary being what it is. It isn't that, Mr. Bullard. Whereas with my income, I could easily support a little uh, uh, tax exemption. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yes, indeed. She'd be welcome in the Bullard home. Now, look here, Bullard. Well, ta-ta, little tot. But I'll, I'll be seeing you. Good day, Gildersleeve. Uh -huh. Wonder what he meant by that. Baby, how'd you like to have a stuffed shirt like that for a father? Ah. Yeah. <laughs> Those are my sentiments exactly. I'd better watch that guy. I may put a gate on that driveway, too. <laughs> Just can't seem to get to sleep. <sighs> Wonder if I ate too much of Bertie's roast beef. No, it isn't that. It's what old Moneybags Bullard was saying. Wonder what he meant by all those sly comments. Have you started adoption proceedings yet, Gildersleeve? Huh? Yes, indeed. He'd be welcome in the bullet home. <laughs> ta ta, little tot. I'll be seeing you real soon. <laughs> Take that. Take that. I was, Leroy. Why did you wake me up? Huh? Bullard had it coming. What a character. <laughs> what a night that was. Oh, well. I'll be at the office in a minute where I can get some sleep. <laughs> Bullard wouldn't try to adopt my baby. He's a neighbor and a friend. Well, a neighbor, anyway. Hey, there's Bullard now, going into the courthouse. Courthouse? I better follow him. There he goes down the hall. I'll stay a little ways behind him. He turned left. I'll bet that's where you go to take out adoption papers. I'll just peek around the corner. Gildersleeve? <laughs> <laughs> Gildersleeve, are you following me? Uh, following me? Uh, just on my way to my office. Gildersleeve, what are you up to? Well, I... Um, what are you up to? What are you doing down here? I'm seeing a certain official about a certain matter, and it's certainly none of your business. It certainly is. I'm going to see my lawyer. Judge, I've got to talk to you. Now, let's re-examine the facts of the case, Mr. Garfinkel. Judge, get off the phone. Excuse me. Gildy, I'm conversing with a client, Farmer Garfinkel. I'm a client, too. Then sit down on the chair. Yes. Now then, Mr. Garfinkel, you allege that hunters trespassed on your property and shot eight tame geese. Geese at a time like this, John. Which we shall hereafter refer to as the corpus delecti. Judge, if you don't hang up, there's going to be a corpus hooker. 
Pardon me, Mr. Garfinkel. There's a big commotion in the office. I'll call you back. I hope you're satisfied now that you've interrupted me on my biggest case this week, Gildy. What's on your alleged mind? Judge, you've got to help me adopt the baby. Well, Gildy, I doubt if I'm your solution. What do you mean? To adopt the baby, you have to get married. And I don't accept your proposal. <laughs> Judge, let's not be ridiculous. I have every reason to believe that somebody is trying to adopt the baby before I do. Who, Gildy? Rumson Bullard. Rumson Bullard? Just yesterday, he said he admired her. And this morning, I caught him sneaking into the courthouse... Judge, you've got to help me. Gildy, I regret to say that if Rumson Bullard is taking steps, there's not much that I can do about it. Judge! And if you're not going to marry and adopt the infant, Bullard's home might not be a bad place for her. Uh-huh. Cultural and social advantages, opportunities to marry well, money. She'd never want for anything, Gildy. Now I can see it. Hooker, you're on Bullard's side, too. I'll bet you even drew up his papers. What? You've turned against your friend and fellow jolly boy. You're nothing but an old goat in wolf's clothing. Now, Gildy, you know I'm the best friend you and that baby have. Horse feathers, Hooker, horse feathers. You can save that stuff for Garfinkel and his eight dead geese. Well, maybe Bullard should adopt the baby. At least she won't have a fat head for a father. Oh, watch it, turncoat. Fat head. Goose lawyer. Goodbye. Baby, you don't know what's happened today, do you? You see that big house across the street? There's a big man in there, and he wants you. I couldn't bear to see this little girl grow up across the street. It would break my heart. But, as Hooker said, she'd never want for anything. Might be for the best. Well, little girl, the only way I can prevent it is to get married. But the prevention seems worse than the cure. <laughs> it's not funny. <laughs> Hi, Uncle. Uh, hello, Leroy. Can I have my allowance three weeks in advance, two and a quarter, huh? Why do you want two dollars and a quarter, Leroy? For a down payment on a dog. A dog? Why do you want a dog all of a sudden? I want to pet him and play with him. Leroy, there are dogs running across our lawn every five minutes. You can pet them. Gosh, they're just mutts. I want a pedigreed dog. Pedigreed dog? Now, where did you get such an idea? Well, nowhere. But gosh, it's my allowance, Unc. I'll put the two and a quarter with what I have and... Hey, Unc, why don't you buy it? Leroy, pedigreed dogs cost a lot of money. You can tell it as my Christmas present. For two years. Yep. <laughs> Leroy, you know you'll want a dozen things between now and Christmas. Well, all right. You don't want me to have it. No, my boy, I didn't say that. Sit down. Let's talk this thing over. Your old uncle isn't made of money, you know. It's all right, Unc. If a little kid can't have a dog, it's all right. <laughs> oh, my goodness. A pedigreed dog. Well, I'd better go up and see if you'll settle for a pedigreed looking mutt. Well, who could that be? It's nearly supper time. Where's Leroy? Uh, Craig Bullard. Where's Leroy? He's upstairs, Craig. He doesn't feel so good. <laughs> What's that? Tell Leroy to come down. I want to show him my pedigreed dog again. Oh, so that's where Leroy got the idea, eh? Leroy doesn't have a pedigreed dog. Well, he may have one someday. I've been thinking of buying him a bird dog just like that. He's not a bird dog. Like you know about dogs, he's a Welsh terrier. Welsh terrier? Oh, yeah, it's getting a little dark out there. Ooh. He's got a pedigreed name on Mile Long. Van Hills Redberry Nightcap of Willow Oak Farms. <clears throat> they sound more expensive than I thought. <laughs> I come down. It's a little late, Craig. Go on home. I'm closing the door. Don't you close the door on me. I'll tell my father. He doesn't like you. I've got news for you. I don't like him either. <laughs> he buys me more than you buy Leroy. I'll bet you you don't buy Leroy anything. That's not true. You're just a big, fat water peddler. Oh, Craig, you go on home now. Water peddler? You go on home to supper. And don't come back with that bird dog. You call me this kill, please? No, Bertie. <laughs> I was just suggesting to Craig that he go home. 
Oh. Uh, Bertie, what would you think about letting some wealthy family like the Bullards adopt the baby? Mr. Bullard? Now, Bertie, I know it comes as a shock to you, but there are a lot of things in favor of it. There'll always be things the water peddler uh, commissioner can't buy. <laughs> Well, money ain't everything, Mr. Gilsleeve. Look how well you raised Miss Marjorie and Leroy. You know what you give them children that money can't buy? Well... You give them part of your heart. Now, Bertie, you're just prejudiced. You may not be a man with a big pocketbook, but you're a man with a big heart. Well, but in the long run, the baby may be better off with Mr. Bullard. Mr. Gilsleeve, you can't give this baby to that man. You don't want this sweet little thing to grow up like that snooty little Craig, do you? Well... Mr. Gilsey, that baby was left in your car, and it's your responsibility. The only way I can keep her is to get married. Married? Well, if that's the only way I take it, throw caution to the wind. <laughs> I may have to at that. Now you're talking, Mr. Gilsey. No sacrifice is too great when it comes to saving the baby. I may save the baby, but who'll save me? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Fifty thousand dollars in prizes, including twenty brand new Ford sedans. Think of it: seven hundred twenty-one prizes, including twenty powerful, streamlined new Ford sedans, will be won in Par K series of big contests. Why, those Fords alone are practically priceless today. And the grand prize winner gets $1,000 to go with the luxurious car he wins. Just listen to these prizes. Each week for five weeks, Parquet is awarding four beautiful new Ford sedans, 40 General Electric table radios, 20 Corey coffee makers, 20 Toastmaster automatic pop-up toasters, 60 new $10 bills. Now, to enter, just help the great Gildersleeve get a name for the pretty little baby girl he found some weeks ago. Write your suggested name for the baby on a contest entry blank. They're available at your food dealers with complete rules. Or use a plain piece of paper. Send entry with one red flap from the end of a package of Parquet Margarine and your name and address to Parquet Margarine, Box 736, Chicago 77, Illinois. Be sure to enclose your Parquet dealer's name and address. Make a bid for your beautiful 1949 Ford, but hurry. This third week's contest closes this Saturday. Mail your entry to Parquet Margarine, Box 736, Chicago 77, Illinois. Now, the first week's winners will be announced at the end of this program. Now, let's return to the Great Gildersleeve. locked behind his back, he walks the streets, bearing his chest and thoughts to the wind and rain. Marriage. <laughs> of course, I won't be able to go out nights with the jolly boys as much till after the first year. But I can adopt the baby, and that's what I want. <sighs> no use kidding yourself, Gildersleeve. You've got to get married. Hello, Peavy. Yeah, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> what can I do for you this brustery afternoon? Well, if you don't mind, I'd like to stand over your floor furnace a few minutes. Yeah, careful. A lot of hot air comes up through there, Mr. Gildersleeve. I know that, Peavy. Peavy, I just made a big decision. I'm going to get married. Yep, a lot of hot air comes up through there. <laughs> I mean it this time, Peavy. Oh, I'm sure you do. Uh, who is the lucky woman? Well, that's what I'd like to talk to you about. You've decided to marry without knowing who? That's living pretty dangerously, Mr. Gildersleeve. I have a pretty good idea, Peavy, but I'd appreciate your opinion. Hmm, Mr. Gildersleeve, I'm no Dorothy Dix. No, but you've been married a long time. You know what adds up to a happy married life. No, no, no I wouldn't say that. <laughs> But I might be able to point out some of the bear traps. Well, <laughs> trap or no trap, Peavy, it's the best thing to do. For me, the baby, and Miss Fairchild. Miss Fairchild, you think? Yeah. What do you think of that line, Fairchild, Peavy? 
Well, she appears to be a fine, upstanding woman. Oh, that she is. Now that I have a baby in the house, I have to have a wife. Are you sure you're not putting the cart before the horse, Mr. Gilbert? <laughs> Peavy, I have reason to believe that if I don't adopt the baby right away, somebody else will. Well, I don't blame you for wanting to adopt the baby. You don't? By George Peavy, I'll call Adeline right now and make a date and propose tonight. And Peavy, thanks for your advice. I didn't give that hothead any advice. Uh, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yes, Peavy? I wonder if you would mind using the telephone booth across the street. Huh? What's the matter, Peavy? Is yours out of order? No, but you're a good customer, Mr. Gildersleeve. I'd hate to have you come in here years later, look at that booth, and hold it against me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'm going to call from here, Peavy, and you can suffer the consequences same as me. Unky, you look so nice tonight. Uh. Thank you, Marjorie. Your lotion smells devastating. And you've shaved so nice and close. Yes, yes. But aren't you a little pale, Unky? Pale? Oh, no, that's talcum powder, I think. <laughs> hey, Unk, why the black suit? Another political rally? Leroy, this is no rally. <laughs> well, you look great anyway, Unk. Uh -huh. I don't know who you're calling on tonight, Unky, but whoever she is, I'll bet she can't resist you. No, I don't suppose she will. <laughs> Here, wait till I straighten your tie. Huh? There. Mm. Now stand back. I want to take one last look at you. You better take one last look, too, Leroy. Why? I want you to remember me the way I am. <laughs> well, can't stay out here all night. I better go in. Those policemen cruising around the block are getting suspicious. Well, better ring the bell, I guess. What if Adeline doesn't accept me? No, you're grabbing at straws, Gildersleeve. <laughs> You've got to go through with it for the baby's sake. Well, hello, Rock Morton. Hello, Adeline. Won't you come into my parlor, said the spider to the fly? Oop. <laughs> Adeline, what do you mean by that? Well, nothing, silly. Are you sure? My, you're touchy this evening. Well, had a hard day. You must have. I'm sorry, Adeline. Sit down. Thank you. This afternoon on the phone, you sounded so eager and so romantic. Yes, I guess I did. Just gonna sit there and whistle all night? <laughs> whistle? Oh, no, no, no. Why didn't I propose over the telephone? <laughs> Would have been easier than this. What's wrong with him? I'd have sworn he was coming over here to propose. <laughs> I could have written her a letter. No, never put it in writing, then you are trapped. Oh. <laughs> Rock Morton, what are you thinking about? Huh? Oh, Adeline? Yes? Adeline? I wonder if you'd hand me one of those mints. Oh. <laughs> My mouth seems a little dry. All right. I have a faint feeling I'm being a little hasty. The sacrifices I make for that baby. Here's a mint. Oh, thank you. He looks a little green. Wonder if all that smelly lotion you poured on made him ill. Adeline? Yes? You and I have known each other a long time. Nearly a year. That's long enough for people to make up their minds about each other. So, Adeline, I came over tonight to ask you... Yes, Throckmorton? To ask you to hand me another mint. <laughs> My mouth's dry again. All right. Why doesn't the silly Billy come to the point? I can't propose to him. 
Unless he waits too long. Here's the mint, Throckmorton. Oh, thank you, Adeline. As I was saying, I seem to like you and you seem to like me. So tonight, Adeline, I'd like to ask you to... Yes, Throckmorton? Pass me another mint. <laughs> Why don't you take the whole box? Oh, thank you. Adeline, you're good-natured, nice-looking, always attractive when I come over in the evening. wonder how she looks in the morning. I've always admired you, too, Throckmorton. You're a successful businessman. You're attractive and sturdy. <laughs> a little too sturdy, but I'll take that off of him. <laughs> Well, Adeline, now that we've talked it over, I'd, uh, I'd, well, I'd like to ask there you... There aren't any more mints. Yeah. <laughs> there aren't? <laughs> then I better go home. Rock Morton, Pete Hildersleeve, you sit down. Huh? Could it be, you sweet little man, that you came over here to propose to little old Adeline? Huh? I accept. You do? <laughs> I've saved the baby. <laughs> Good night, Adeline. You great, big, broad-shouldered husband to be. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> well, Gildersleeve, you have every reason to be a happy man. That sick feeling in your stomach is probably because you ate so many mints. <laughs> probably. <laughs> uh, who's that? Oh, Bullard, out walking that dog. Well, I've got something to say to him. Bullard, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, quiet. Quiet, boy. Uh, good evening, Gildersleeve. Bullard, you can't have the baby. What's that, Gildersleeve? You thought you could double-cross me, didn't you? With all your money, you thought you could step right in and take my baby away from me. Well, Bullard, it won't work. I've taken steps. I'm going to get married. Well, congratulations, Gildersleeve. Don't you congratulate me, Bullard. It means I can adopt the baby. I think that's wonderful. Congratulations again. What? Aren't you mad because you can't adopt her? Certainly not. Why should I be? But, Bullard, what about this morning at the courthouse? What were you doing there? Gildersleeve, it's none of your business, but if you must know... I was getting this dog a license. A dog license? <laughs> I've been double, double crossed. Now for the names of the four top winners in the first of Parquet's five big baby naming contests. Oh, I want to hear that. Each one of the following contest entrants has won a massive, powerful, streamlined 1949 four-door Ford sedan. Mm. This is L.A. Morse of Long Beach, California. Lorne R. Kermit, Jr. of Detroit, Michigan. Mrs. Allie E. Truman of Portland, Oregon. Mrs. Luanna Bassinger of Route 2, Box 33, Rockwell, North Carolina. Congratulations to all of you. Yes, indeed. Winners of 140 other prizes in the first week's contest will be notified by mail. Four more winners of Fords will be announced next week. Remember, you can enter the big $50,000 contest as often as you want. Send in several entries, maybe four or five this week, and boost your opportunities to win a brand new Ford sedan. Ladies and gentlemen, every year at this time, the community chest appeals to you for help. A single donation to the community chest means a donation to all health, welfare, and recreation organizations that serve your community. By giving generously, you can be sure that your money is helping where it's most needed. You give once a year, but the wonderful work of the community chest goes on all year round. So please give generously. Thank you, and good night. Hey, here's the main dish food that won't play hard with your food budget. It's cheese, golden good cheese. It's a bargain in nutrition. Cheese is a protein food, a main dish food. In fact, ounce for ounce, no other basic food matches cheese for high-quality, complete protein for calcium, phosphorus, and other nutrients from milk. Tomorrow, get one of Kraft's famous pasteurized process varieties, medium mellow Kraft American or sharp Old English. For rich yet mild cheddar flavor, get the delicious cheese food Velveeta. For marvelous lower-cost main dishes, cook with... This